Blessed be God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, Kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you all are so all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Seek the Lord and live, for he will break out arrogantly against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel, and no one will quench it. Ah, uh, you that turn justice to work wood and bring righteousness to the ground, they hate the one who reproves at the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and take from them the levies of the grain. You have built houses of beauty stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink of their wine. For I know how many of your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who affect the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy at the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such time, for it is an evil time. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish the justice in the gate. It may be the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord.
from the letter to the Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides the soul from the spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have high priests who have passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard is it, it is to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, From works, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, there is no one who has left house, 
or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or equals, for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Savior and Sanctifier. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> then who can be saved? The disciples asked. Who can be saved? How would you answer that question? For many of us, it's a struggle to talk about this easy subject. Now, frankly, as an Episcopalian, the alarm bells in my head go off when someone brings up salvation. Is this going to turn into some sort of fundamentalist conversation, I wonder, about how I can only be saved if I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Now, we know that there's something about salvation that's related to Jesus' death on the cross, but for many of us, the pain and the suffering associated with that brings up feelings of guilt and shame that we walked away from in another time and place. Complications like these mean that we often settle on the idea that salvation is more or less about getting to heaven when I die, if I believe in Jesus. <laughs> But I think if we wrestle with today's text, we'll find that being saved is much more than that, and very, very different to boot. Our story today begins with a rich man who asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And notice throughout this passage that Mark is changing things up for us a little bit. He reframes that question twice. What must I do to enter the kingdom of God? And what must I do to be saved? Because for Mark, those three things, inheriting eternal life, entering the kingdom of God, and being saved, are all the same thing. And I was left wondering this week what sort of answer this man was expecting feels like he's trying to lead Jesus into punching his kingdom tickets. That by carefully following the rules, he's good to go. I mean, he acts ethically. He treats other people well. If you can believe him, he does the right thing all the time. We can almost imagine this man thinking, what more could this rabbi possibly ask him? But Jesus does ask for more. He tells the man there's only one thing left to do. Sell everything he owns and give proceeds to the poor. And everyone, the rich man, the disciples, and the onlookers are shocked by Jesus' command. Because what Jesus says flies in the face of his society's culture and theology. In Jesus' time, the material prosperity was widely seen as a reward for spiritual virtue. Part of the book of Job's shock value, for example, is that Job is this upright and man who acts ethically and worships God, and then calamity after calamity befalls him. It doesn't make any sense. 
Like the rich man in this story, Job has spent his life buying into the bargain, trading faithful action for material blessings. So it doesn't make any sense for Jesus to come along and tell him he can't enter the kingdom of God unless he gets rid of all those tangible signs of God's blessing for doing the right thing. It doesn't make any sense. Or does it? It's easy to take Jesus' words about wealth being an obstacle to entering the kingdom of God as a critique of wealth for wealth's sake. And wealth does bring power. And it does need to be critiqued. I think Jesus is getting at something bigger than that today. The problem with wealth isn't the wealth itself. The problem is the worldview that comes with it. As we accumulate riches, we are tempted to trust in our possessions and our powers of accumulating them, rather than in God, for our ultimate security and comfort. And interestingly, the more wealth we have, the more we come to rely on it, and the harder it becomes to let go. And the challenge is that not only do we stop trusting in God, but as we place our trust more and more in ourselves, we become isolated from everyone and everything around us. And we end up with a very lonely existence, the opposite of what life in the kingdom of God is really like. Richman's challenge today is that he doesn't realize the things he does in the here and now matter. That eternal life is something he's going to inherit in the future. And I wonder if that is in our challenge too, sometimes. I wonder if our imaginations have become so focused on the immortality of our souls and going to heaven that salvation has become about going away from this world. I wonder if we discount the possibility that God can change us, rescue us, transform us, offer new possibilities today. Maybe we need to wrestle with the Greek and be reminded that salvation comes from the Greek word sozo, which was used to describe healing, deliverance, blessing, empowerment, liberation, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and more. But all that requires us to be in relationship with others. And that, my friends, is where the rich man fell short. The things he was doing did not lead him into authentic relationships. My friends, eternal life is here. We can start living it today. But to enter it, we have to give up buying into that same bargain. We have to give up the things that we think are blessings, but which really separate us from other people. We have to stop thinking that our own virtue and faith lead to the blessing of eternal life. We are saved when we stop worrying about our own salvation and turn our attention to God and to our neighbor. We're saved when we enter that same pattern of self-sacrifice that Jesus demonstrates over and over again on his way to giving his very life on the cross. The rich man believed the lie that in following the rules, he had the power to save himself. And Jesus loved him so much, he showed him where his stumbling block was. His wealth that stopped him from entering into relationship. That stopped him from being saved. 
Today's gospel is good news if we are prepared to let go of whatever fraudulent and collapsible supports we are tempted to rely on instead of trusting in God. So what's our wealth? Maybe it's wealth. Maybe it's something else altogether. But what do we put our trust in instead of God? What is it that isolates us from our neighbor? That keeps us from turning those ethical actions into authentic, shared relationships? My friends, let go of that. Trusting that with God's gracious help, all things are possible. What does it mean to be saved? What more could salvation be than to be persons who share our lives with our neighbors, who are sharing the life and God? <laughs> what more could salvation be than to stop living the lie that we can save ourselves and instead respond to God's call to join in God's mission in the world, reconciling all of creation to each other and to God? Amen. I invite you to say with me the words of the Iona affirmation. We believe in God and all of us, maker and sustainer of all life, of the sun and the moon, of the water and the earth, of the female and the male, and all genders. We believe in God and beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with the grief. He died alone and forsaken. He descended into the earth, to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven, to be the right for our presence throughout all ages. And his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning in Pentecost of fire, life giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection. Creator God, by the mercies of your Son, our Lord Jesus, compel us to turn our hearts to his way of love, that we might follow Jesus together as your faithful people. We pause, listen, and respond in prayer, saying, Jesus, guide us in your way. Jesus, your life, death, resurrection, and ascension inspire the church to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship. Guide your people to learn your word, that we might see God's story unfolding in our midst. We pray together. Jesus, guide us in your way. Son of God, you responded to our Father in prayer and pleaded that we might all be one. Guide the leaders and faithful citizens of this nation to respond to God and to one another in compassion, in thought and deed, with or without words, that the people of our nation might live in unity and peace. We pray together. Jesus Christ, your right. Light of the world, you taught us to worship in spirit and in truth. Lead us to join with others to acknowledge the holiness of God, that the whole world might be united in the truth of your love. We pray together. Jesus, guide us in your way. Lord, you came not to be served, but to serve. Empower us to bless one another and our neighbors, that your spirit of generosity, compassion, and selfless action transform us and the people in our midst. 
We pray together. Jesus Christ, your way. Savior, you came into our midst that we might know life. Embolden us to go among those who are weary, burdened, sick, or imprisoned, especially Bobby, Ron, Jess, Joanne, Guy, Nancy, Jeff, Linda, Martha, Sharon, Jerry, Joe, Don, Louise, Sarah, Tom, Sharon, Bill, Dale, Nick, David, John, Jean, Pam, Sue, Chris, Bob, and Helen. That we might live like you, crossing the boundaries that divide rich from poor, sick from well, and sinner from saint. We pray together. Jesus Christ, your way. Lamb of God, in your death you destroyed death and taught us the way to eternal life. Compel us to daily die to self and rest in your grace. May all who have died rest in peace and rise in glory, especially Margaret Dunkley, Don Fiedler, and Denny Lenhart. We pray together. Jesus, guide us in your way. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave your life for the life of all, we commit our lives to following you. Continually guide us in your way and draw us into life as your beloved community in this age and in the age to come. For you live and reign with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. I invite you to sit, stand, or kneel, whichever pose you find in this prayer. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved your neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may be light in your will. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, give you an eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. St. David's and Webb Barnett welcomed us and all the people here have always been so welcoming and such a wonderful body and uh, we've been very happy all those years. My wife died uh, four years ago this very day and uh, she's not here to witness with me obviously. 
I just want to touch on the wonderment of this church. It has a great heritage. Uh, early on, uh, we brought the Crusoe Movement, which is a short course in Christianity, to the state of Minnesota. This church did. We went to Iowa to learn how to do it. The bishop was involved. Reverend Bauer was with it. With us. It was a small group. I was part of it. And it passed through the whole state. And uh, it's a wonderful movement. Uh, Reverend Bauer also fostered the Teens Encounter Christ movement, which is so well known. <clears throat> this church also has produced many deacons that have been chosen from this body. So it's always been a leading church and as far as the, uh, the needs for the community arose in terms of the need for food for people, the church added a warehouse, a huge warehouse to house the food for the ICA. I could go on and on. One of the most <coughs> current situations is our very Reverend Catherine Lewis who has just been appointed to be Dean of the West Metro and West and Central Mission of Minnesota. A sign of great leadership that always comes out of this church and has to do with the people and the leaders we have here. And a personal note, uh, my daughter Annette, early on in high school, had a very close friend who <coughs> was unchurched and she would come to church with us all the time. <coughs> And uh, she was so impressed with the Episcopal religion, she went on to become a minister. She ended up with a church of her own in New York for a number of years, and then was appointed canon for the Bishop of New York for the, for the, uh, the state of Manhattan. So it, it, uh, it's very obvious my enthusiasm for this church. But I also bring my friend here, Sandy, Sandy Sly, and uh, she <coughs> states, this church is really special. It has a soul. So what more can I say how I support this church? And I hope you'll do the same. My friends, just before we have communion, a reminder that we have a prayer station. Uh, during the meeting, if you wish to be prayed with or for, we have some wonderful volunteers who are out there and will be willing to do that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their forces, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, you were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. We turn against you, we betray your trust, and we turn against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. To prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, and to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconciled us. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly courts, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you as well, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending name. Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his time. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of our mothers, God of Hagar and Sarah, Rebecca and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength. <laughs> For pardon only and not for renewal. For the grace of this holy communion, make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Through his Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and embraces, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
by faith, with thanksgiving.
I might understand that you are able to do so. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we thank you for giving us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work we have given us to do, to love and to serve you. As faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to give unto you and his Holy Spirit the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. I think we have a few announcements before we go. Good morning. My name is David Niles. I'm the junior warden here at St. David's. That's an elected lay leadership position. And I want to welcome everyone here to St. David's on this blustery day. It looks like the winds have died down a little bit, but it's been fun watching them really go for my spot in the choir. Um, I'm guessing Kathy's gonna say this in a minute, but I just wanna say thank you to Lamar for your wonderful witness talk. Thank you again. It's great to see the Reverend Guy Drake back among us in person. And finally, I want to welcome back the Reverend Aaron Twait. Um, if, if you don't recognize him, here, Aaron, do this. That's what, that's what he looked like most of the time he was with us. Aaron joined us from Christ Church Woodbury during uh, his internship year in the depths of COVID. And so we either saw him on a screen or with a mask on. Um, but we are so glad that you are back. And, and since he was here, he's been ordained and is now at Christ Church uh, Red Wing, where he's the priest in charge. And we are just so grateful for you coming on your off day to preach and celebrate. <laughs> and then well, finally, I want to encourage you to join us downstairs for the... Uh, coffee hour, and if you want to know what that's about, if you want to know why I'm holding a computer bag, you'll have to listen to the next announcement. Thank you. <laughs> nice segue. Uh, I'm Holden Niles. I'm chair of the Justice Collaborative here, and we have three things going on this month. Um, so today, right after the service, right in the narthex there, we've got tables set up. Um, it's just information for how to vote, where to vote. Any kind of questions you want from the Secretary of our State, um, he's got an excellent website. Actually, David and I used it this morning because we were wondering, you know, how close our neighbor's signs could be to uh, St. David's because it's a polling place. And it turns out it's private property. You can absolutely put your signs up. It doesn't matter the distance. And now we know. Um, so any kind of information you want about voting, uh, we can help you with that today. And then right after that of the coffee hour, we have the Minnetonka Police Department is going to be here, actually, a few representatives, and they're really trying to go to the different big communities and re-pledge to the community that they're here for us and just kind of reintroduce themselves, and there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers. And then um, next Sunday, we're going to do a Voting Our Values Forum at, uh, for the coffee hour. So we have Ben Whalen coming from Isaiah, and uh, we're a member of that group. It's a group of congregations and barber shops and any kind of community groups. Um, they get together to try and do work for legislation and uh, really make a difference in our communities. And anyway, he's going to come, and I'm going to talk with him about voting our values and what does that mean in a nonpartisan way. Like we're not going to just hide from it, but we want to create a safe space to talk about it. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Kathy Switzenberg, and I'm just here I'm leading our giving campaign, which is well underway. And I too want to thank Lamar when I called him to ask if he would share with us. He didn't even hesitate. He, he said yes immediately, and, and that in itself is an inspiration to me. And I also just loved hearing about his history here at St. David's. It was just, it's also inspiring for me to hear. Um, I also want to let you know that our, as of last week, I missed, I missed saying this last week, so I should have said it then, but um, our vestry and clergy have all pledged, so they've said, they pled the way for us as a congregation, so I want to thank them for that. 
Um, I also want to let you know, as, as you know, we're, we're trying something new this year where most of you got, I think everybody got an email, but we also sent some packets out to people we know aren't emailers. Um, if you're not comfortable pledging through email, there are some blank pledge packets out right by the podium. Ron is holding up the basket with them. So if you, if you prefer not to pledge online, grab one of those on your way out and then there'll be a, a pledge card in there and an uh, envelope for you to send it back. Um, and lastly, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your support of the parish and um, allowing us, allowing me to get up here and talk about this every week in October. <laughs> I know it sounds repetitive, it does to me too, but it's important, so thank you for your support. Good morning, I'm Anna, I'm your children and youth minister. Um, and I just wanted to share about this week, um, Wednesday, since we have NEA break coming up, we won't have any youth group this Wednesday. <laughs> we love youth group. <laughs> That's the reaction I want. Thank you, Jay. Um, and then we are, um, check the weekly news because we have our program calendar and um, we're also trying something new on Sunday mornings of kind of switching back and forth between that and play and um, a new curriculum called the Peace Table. Um, and so come and check that out. We're kind of um, dividing that up by age a little bit, but it's flexible. Um, but just know that the Godly Play is kind of geared towards a younger audience and that the Peace Table is kind of geared towards upper elementary, um, but all are welcome always. Um, so check out the program calendar in that regard as well. Thanks. I am Sue Owen, um, Rachel and I were the prayer ministers today, and we want everybody to help us today and pray for God. So if everybody could stand up and turn to the sky here. <laughs> Gracious God, we thank you for God, for his love, his faith, his words of wisdom. May the man who can give you the sacred place on that day, Lord, we pray that you will touch him and have him to you and give him to him. We are so grateful for his mercy. Pray for Dan that you all do the same. We just lift them all as brothers and sisters in love and ask that you be glorified. Step of his invitation. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> For your kindness. Uh, it is just a joy to be here and it's fortunate to be here. May God's hope be a clearing sky before you, a light calling you to where you belong, and the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>